How to Manage Personal Finances, Chapter 7, Reconciling Your Bank Account. This is Ken Boyd with the Accounting Accidentally Substack page. So, common problem. Remember that I'm posting the text version of this entire book on Substack and video versions on YouTube. You can email me here for details of my fifth book's publication date in late 24, early 25. So, to the topic at hand, no one likes flossing. It's a hassle. It's uncomfortable and we don't see any immediate benefits. Sure, dentists tell us that flossing is important, but we may not see the benefits until we show up for teeth cleaning six months, a year out. The same is true of reconciling your bank account. You need to gather records, think carefully, invest your time, it takes effort. However, just like flossing, reconciling your bank account each month, every single month, is critical to long-term financial success. So why should you bother? Well, there's two reasons. Main reasons. Reconciling your bank account helps identify errors and possibly fraudulent transactions. For example, maybe your ca cable company overcharges you by $50, or even worse, someone steals your debit card and starts charging items on your account. A second reason, subscription fees. They're growing all the time. IndieWire reports that, quote, on average streaming households now spend $61 a month for four different subscriptions to streaming overall, USA Today reports that the average monthly spending for all subscriptions, which you can throw in Spotify and everything else, is $219 a household. The point, if you reconcile your bank account, you can identify subscription fees that you no longer want or need. I'm actually doing this tomorrow and canceling four different subscriptions. Are you convinced? If so, let's reconcile a bank account. So we start with two documents. So here is Ch Ch Sally's check register on the left and her bank statement on the right. And you'll notice that the ending balances don't agree. Now you'll see that there are some transactions that are in color. So some transactions are not posted to both lists. Those are called reconciling items. I have listed each reconciling item in a different color. Items that are not listed in color are not reconciling items, meaning that those transactions are posted to the check register and the bank statement, they match. So the water bill posted to the check register and the bank statement, it is not a reconciling item. Only the ones that in color are. So using that information, here's a bank reconciliation. So we start with the balance per bank, the ending balance on the bank statement, which is right there. Then we add in Deposits that are not in the bank statement, including the Schwab stock dividend. We subtract checks that are not posted to the bank statement, outstanding checks. The car payment didn't get to the bank statement yet. Then we have to deal with items that are in the bank statement, but not in the checkbook. So bank interest on a CD, hit the bank statement, not posted to the checkbook. We add it in. Bank fees, very common, posted to the bank statement, not in the checkbook yet. We subtract it. So the first two are items not posted to the bank statement. The second two are items not yet posted to the checkbook. We get what we call an adjusted cash balance at the end. So what does that represent? The 4170 adjusted cash balance fully accounts for all the transactions in both the check register and the bank statement. And a final note here, complete a bank statement as soon as you can access your bank account, which these days is probably the first day of the month, second day of the month, you can download it electronically. The faster you find errors and fraudulent transactions, the better. If you put off bank reconciliations, you may be managing your finances with an incorrect bank balance. That's as far as we'll get today. Remember that you can get all the chapters in both text form here on Substack and in a YouTube list of videos. Thanks for watching.